Are you recording right now? Hey, everybody. Sam Dog, the infamous 253, come at you live with Michael Mathis here. Michael, how you doing? Pretty good, mate. How you doing? Doing good, homie. So today, me and Michael are about to give you our reaction and thoughts of the final 53-man roster of the Seattle Seahawks for the 2021 season. So let's get into it. Position by position, look at the Seahawks initial 21, 2021 roster. And here it is. Quarterbacks, obviously, Russell Wilson, Geno Smith, and Sean Mannion. Now, my first thought about Sean Mannion being on the roster is I think that won't last long unless we make that move to sign Geno Atkins or whatever other free agent we may decide to take another chance on. So Sean Mannion could easily get bumped down to the practice squad, like Seahawks' Brendan Nelson mentioned earlier in his video when he was going over the fit three-man roster. So the Seahawks have usually kept only two quarterbacks on roster, but Mannion, who has experience with Shane Waldron from their time together with the Rams, sticks around as the number three behind Wilson and Smith. But what do you think? Do you think Mannion gets bumped down the practice squad? Yeah, although I'm not sure it's going to be Geno Atkins that does it. And the reason why I say that is because we only have four receivers on the roster right now, and usually we carry five or six. Yeah. So I'm definitely surprised that we have three quarterbacks, only four receivers, because God forbid if, if DK Metcalf gets hurt or Lockett gets hurt, um, that's going to be a disaster if we don't have any more receivers, I feel. Yeah. Yeah, that's for sure. Running backs, Chris Carson, Rashad Penny, Travis Homer, DJ Dallas, Alex Collins, and Nick Ballard. But Nick Ballard will probably most likely now be uh, playing linebacker. He was doing yeah. pretty decent at linebacker during the preseason. I was surprised to even see him playing linebacker during the preseason after Ben Burkirvan got hurt, and he was killing it. But, man, surprise, surprise, we were able to keep Carson, Penny – DJ Dallas and Alex Collins and Travis Homer. And I think Travis Homer should most likely, if Ballor plays linebacker, Travis Homer should most likely make the transition to fullback. Because Travis Homer, I mean, when he was running back, he always lost us a bunch of yards whenever he got handoffs most of the time. But the only prop I give Travis Homer is that he's a good blocker, though. So what are your thoughts on this? I mean, I'm not upset. I mean, I'm trying to think about how I feel about Rashad Penny right now. I mean, if he shows the potential that he has uh, this season, then I'm not upset. But I'm still a bit bummed that uh, Josh Johnson got bumped out. Uh, I, I feel as though Rashad Penny just hasn't lived up to his uh, to his first round pick status. Nah. Uh, and like you said, Nick Ballor is more of a linebacker now than he is a, a running back or fullback. Yeah, and what, um, what pisses me off still about that Rashad Penny pick nowadays is that we could have had Nick Chubb. I'm not going to let that go to the fact that we could have had Nick Chubb and Chris Carson in the same backfield, man. That would have been epic, man, to have both Carson and, and Chubb other than having Penny, man. So, yeah. yeah. The thing that – Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. You go ahead. Yeah, the thing that intrigues me most about um, this running back group here is there's a lot of speculation for uh, or for the idea that we're bringing in so many running backs that we're going to trade one of them. And I don't know which one we would trade. I mean, uh, Chris Carson we just paid, so trading him doesn't seem very likely. No. Nope. Um, Rashad Penny, I can see it, but uh, I'm also hearing that since he's kind of an elusive back or an outside runner, perhaps. Um, he might fit Shane Waldron's actual system and not his preseason system very well. That's what so Brent was saying about Penny, is that he could fit Waldron's system. But Yeah. yeah Travis Alex, Homer. Go ahead. Yeah. But Alex Collins, though, I'm surprised that – I was seeing some rumors about potential uh, – with uh, Alex Collins that there were rumors that they were playing him all the way. I know they were playing him all the way into the, into like the third or the fourth quarter with the thoughts of the rumors were, were we trying to raise his uh, trade stock for if we were going to trade Alex Collins to a team like Baltimore, where he spent time with before and almost had a thousand yards. So, cause the Ravens did lose a uh, JK Dobbins for the year to a torn ACL. I, I think that's what it was. 
a torn ACL or torn Achilles, let us know in the comments. But yeah, I would, I remember seeing possible rumors about we were only playing Alex Collins to try to raise his trade stock, but he had, he showed his shiftiness with all the jukes in that too. So I'm pretty happy that if Collins stay, sticks around, I'd be pretty happy if Collins, you know, sticks around for that. Yeah. And one thing I will add to that, and I forget who tweeted, I want to say it was either, um, I want to say it was either Greg Bell or John Boyle, but one of them said that um, they actually pretty evenly distributed all the rush or the uh, number of rushing attempts that each running back got. So Alex Collins got like 20 some carries, but so did uh, Rashad Penny and uh, DJ Dallas as well. And I think Josh Johnson, when he was playing, they all got about 20 some carries. So that's, that's what I heard. I haven't actually looked at the numbers on that, but that's what somebody uh, in the Seattle media put out. They actually pretty evenly distributed those. Okay. So, I'm a, so I'm a little bit skeptical of the theory that they're trying to boost Alex Collins and his draft stock potentially. But yep. I, would, I would definitely not be surprised if one of these running backs got traded. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, of course, you've got DJ Dallas. He played really good throughout like he was just dj dallas for full-time kickoff return man i i am in favor of that as well um because it seems like every time he got the ball in his hands uh he was making plays or if he was on the field like those first two preseason games he he caught that screen pass for a touchdown that was pretty impressive and that was like the that was like the only offensive highlight for like two weeks basically Yep, indeed. That little dump yeah. off from Alex McGon to DJ Al- Dallas. Alex McGon, yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I keep getting phone calls. But basically, uh, he was the only real highlight maker on that field on, on offense and special teams. Um, and Nick Ballore is obviously, like you said, he's a bit more of a linebacker than he is a fullback this time around. So, <laughs> yeah, we'll see. All right. Wide receivers DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, D. Eskridge, and Freddie Swain for our four wide receivers. Now, we knew Freddie Swain would somehow put his name in the mix with uh, the departure of David Moore and Dwayne Eskridge, even though he played in one preseason game. He showed some flash in that game against the LA Chargers. And I was pretty happy to see him showing that speed and getting open. And Geno Smith was able to hit him on the money for a couple of plays too. Now, what happens with Kay Johnson and Connor? What I know, Weddington, you know, got waived, and we don't know if those two, Wade Weddington and uh, Kay Johnson, will be on the practice squad too. So, hopefully, they manage to get themselves on the practice squad. So, what's your thoughts so far on the receiver room, Michael? I've pretty much already touched on that. I think like. I don't. I, I wish we had at least one or two more receivers rather than having three quarterbacks. But um, yeah, I don't. In terms of like who actually made the roster, I'm not upset at all. I think that's. I think that's pretty much what we all expected. I mean, obviously, DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, and Esfred are making the team. Obviously. Freddie, Freddie Swain. I mean, he showed potential last year, and Wilson was definitely targeting a fair amount down the field. Mm-hmm. So we'll see what he we'll see what he brings in uh, is it year two for him. I was bummed about Penny Hart getting cut because I really thought he had a good outing during the preseason. And he showed some flashes on the Jets sweep, especially that one Jet sweep he got against the Jets last year. So I was really bummed to see Penny Hart not make it, though, because I really thought he was doing great. Yeah, Penny Hart did pretty good this preseason and in those uh, games you described. And also, uh, what was his name? Aaron Fuller, I also just uh, – I, I wish he made the team as well because he was playing pretty good on special teams and he just kind of – he had a few really good plays. I, I think in the first preseason game, like, he caught a ball on third down where he broke a tackle and ran for, like, 20 yards or something like that. Yeah, that was in Vegas. He did that. All right, tight ends, tight ends. Gerald Everett, Will Disley, and Colby Parkinson, obviously, on the uh, on the uh, uh, PUP, which obviously had that foot injury. We don't know how long – he should be back, hopefully, by October – so we're going to have to lean on Joe Everett and Will Disley. And obviously we know Jacob Hollister just got cut, which God forbid, do not bring him back. Obviously undersized and not a good blocker. And what we're going to do with a third tight end to hold on with. So 
during the regular season while Parkinson recovers. We don't know yet, but let's wait and see what they decide to do with the tight end. But I'm really excited for Gerald Everett. I'm really excited for Gerald Everett because one of the things I always loved about Everett, I remember that game when he carved us up when he was a Ram back on the night we honored Paul Allen. He was breaking tackles and getting a whole bunch of extra yards after the catch and all that stuff too. That was one thing I really loved about Gerald Everett. Remember how you and me would always talk about how Everett was good with yards after the catch, breaking tackles and that too. And then Will Disley, hopefully Will Disley. I mean, glad that he played a full season last year, but hopefully Will Disley can keep on being productive. Or he can yeah, be productive, you know, still too. Yeah, but, he uh, – Gerald Everett definitely strikes me as interesting. I he, he seems like he's really fast, and he's really good for the run after the catch. I mean, Will Disley didn't really show as much last year, but before he got hurt the year before, he seemed to have like a really, really strong connection with Russell. Yeah. Uh, Colby Parkinson, I mean, I don't have much to really say about him. I mean, he, didn't, he hasn't really played as much as I, anyone would have wanted him to, but if, correct me if I'm wrong, I think he's like, what, six foot six, six foot seven, something like that. Yeah. Uh, um, six foot he's seven. Death, seven. Six foot seven. Yeah. yeah, so he's he would he seems like he'd be the perfect type for a really good red zone target. Um, no real shockers in that tight end group, really. <laughs> no, not really, not indeed. Offensive line: Dwayne Brown, Brandon Shelb, Cedric Abui, Jamarco Jones, Jake Curhan. Now, Jake Curhan, that was a surprise. Jake Curhan out of Cal. I was surprised that Jake Curhan, one of the other undrafted players that we got, he's the only undrafted player that I think made it to the 53-man roster. Another diamond in the rough in the undrafted free agency. Another strike. Hopefully, it turns out good. You know, kind of like the last undrafted gem we landed, which was Puna Ford on the defensive side. But hopefully now we got one on the right tackle spot with Jake Curran. Then, of course, you got Stone Forsyth, Gabe Jackson, who we traded with the Raiders for, Damian Lewis, Ethan Posick, Kyle Fuller, and Phil Haynes. Now, well, Jamarco Jones maybe be cut to make room if we decide to sign another sign either Geno Atkins or one of these other guys that we may be looking into, like Brendan Nelson mentioned in his video. What do you think on the offensive lineman, and what do you think of the possibilities that maybe we might release Jamarco Jones to make room for if we were to go sign Geno Atkins? Um, Jamarco Jones, I don't see him getting cut. I mean. I wouldn't be surprised if he did, but I think if you're going to cut one of these offensive linemen. You'd probably be more likely to cut either Haynes. Uh, Haynes actually showed up pretty well this preseason. I think oh. you'd probably, I don't know how his contract is structured, but I'd probably, if I was to cut one of these guys, I'd probably go for Cedric Obwehi. Cedric, Obo Cedric Obo Obwehi? Yeah, I mean, that's kind of a tougher one. It is. But I'm. But I'm looking at this, and um, Dwayne Brown, obviously not cutting him. Brandon Shell, when he was in last year, he was definitely he was serviceable. I mean, I, I don't know where he ranked, but I'm pretty sure he was somewhere in like the middle of the pack, kind of. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not trying to say Obwegi is bad at all by any means, but I'm just saying of these people, I just really have trouble thinking that um, that they'd get cut. Or, more, or at least more likely than Obey he will be. I mean, Jamarco Jones is another option. Yeah. Jake Ker, Jake Kerhan, he really impressed this preseason. I mean, when he was playing, he really – I don't think he gave up a single pressure. That's impressive for an undrafted rookie. Now, Stone Forsythe, we know he gave up some pressures in that first Raider game, but he showed signs of some improvement. But now we need to see it in the regular season. Now, Stone, granted, he's just a rookie like Kerhan. Let these rookies learn and – Hopefully we'll see improvement throughout the season from Curhan and Forsythe being the two rookies on our offensive line. So, so hope for the best on this one, but hopefully Curhan, like we mentioned, another solid diamond in the rough undrafted gem that we landed with John Schneider as the hel at the helm of our GM with him and Pete Carroll, man. Cause you know, they have really been hitting a lot on those undrafted free agents. Curhan, Puna Ford, man. And then, of course, way back in the day, Doug Baldwin, Jermaine Curse. Man, it's just yeah. they really know how to hit on some on some certain undrafted gems. Yeah. If we're thinking of the same play in that Raiders game, though, I don't think that was Stone Forsythe's fault, though. I think it was actually the center 
uh, hiking the ball at the wrong time. Because I think after that play, um, Geno Smith immediately went to go talk to the center. Yeah, he was in, then he went to concussion protocol and then obviously didn't play the following week. All right, defensive line. Carlos Dunlap, Kerry Hyder, Daryl Taylor, LJ Collier, Rasheem Green, Benson Mayoa, Alton Robinson, Puna Ford, Al Woods, and Brian Monet. And Daryl Taylor was, was the one who impressed me the most in the preseason with the reps he was getting. He was really getting after the quarterback, especially last – game against the LA Chargers he was just really getting after the quarterback too he was even getting after it a bit even in that game against the Raiders and the Denver game a bit Daryl Taylor was my big standout granted he didn't get the play last year I was really happy to see Daryl Taylor just getting after it and I got a lot of concerns with you know LJ Collier being our our first round pick back in 2019 with him them playing him in the fourth quarter I don't know man what to think about LJ Collier and what may what will happen to him in the future too like I mean that was like another first round first round fail too which I we just got to do a lot better you know drafting in the first round in the future and not just I mean I know people like oh we're not good but not people need to understand the value of first round picks too and we need to start using our first round picks more better than what we've done lately in the last couple of rounds granted we I mean Jordan Brooks we'll see what else happens with him but I think Jordan Brooks was good during the preseason and obviously uh, showed some flash last year and hopefully he improves this coming season granted we're on the defensive line we're talking about a linebacker but LJ Collier I don't know man what do you think yeah I, I look at this list of players and really none of them surprised me in the slightest uh they all performed really well the preseason i mean obviously you didn't have carlos dunlap playing that much but or he didn't play at all no. but or and i don't think myoa played any any snaps uh or put, didn't play any snaps yeah those guys are all proven so i feel like this is one of those situations where it's a good problem to have you just have too many good talented defensive linemen on your roster yeah but I genuinely believe if one of these guys gets hurt, God forbid, um, we would actually be fine because there's just so much depth there that I'm actually not that scared of it. You can only hope. Now, also, Alton Robinson, who had a good year one, too, was really killing it during his preseason, too, and can't wait to see what he does going into, going into year two. Yep, and one thing that I will add is what we saw during the preseason – was, a, was was without Quandre Diggs, without DJ Reed for the most part, without Jamal Adams, without Bobby Wagner. And I feel like when you add those guys onto the field, you're going to see a significant difference in the coverage you're going to have. And um, that's going to help the pass rush get even better. Marquise Blair played a little bit in the, in the third game. I mean, really. Blair was Blair, and Blair was Blair's Blair coming back was huge too. All right, linebackers obviously Wagner, Jordan Brooks, Cody Barton, and now of course we could add it. Technically, that should be four with Nick Bellor being a linebacker. But Cody Barton, he was he was getting after it at linebacker. Grant Cody Barton's been a good special teams player too, but when he's been getting out there at linebacker, he was getting in on some blitzes, had a couple of nice sacks in the Vegas game, and then of course he had the sack that stripped uh, Chase Daniels in the Charger game last Saturday where Marquise Blair caught it while it was still in the air and House called it. And Cody Barton, he's hungry for some more plays at linebacker. And let's see how he'll do against – I mean, granted, he'll if he gets in from time to time, he'll be going up against starters. But, man, I was really impressed with what Cody Barton was doing in the preseason. And then Jordan yeah. up in that – I mean – Got some, got some reps, and he made them plays in the Denver game too. But Cody Barton, let's let's hope that he can uh, flash this year too. Yep, I have nothing more to add to that. Just I feel really bad for Ben Burke Kirvin, really. Yeah, torn ACL, and he was another good player on the special teams. I hated seeing him go down like that in the Denver game. Yeah, on the opening kickoff too. Yeah, that's what really makes makes us all feel bad for BBK because of that, especially since it's on the opening kickoff. All yeah. right, cornerbacks, Keller Witherspoon, Trey Flowers, DJ Reed, and Trey Browns. We're on the secondary, obviously, safeties, Jamal Adams, Quandre Diggs, Marquise Blair, Ugo Amadi, Ryan Needle, Ryan Neal. I hope I really hope Ryan Neal can 
recover, man, because he had a nice interception in that game against the Raiders, and he made some plays for us last year. It just sucks that he's going through that. Was it in? I think it was an oblique strain. So, yeah, I'm gonna hold down the fort for Ryan Ryan Neal. And I know we I know we recently traded for Sidney Jones, and that might also be a move to also have him help hold down the place of Ryan Neal while he's uh, recovering from that strain. Or I think he'll be on there with the cornerbacks too. So I don't cornerback safety whatever we have. So I'm oh wait, Trey Brown's also hurt too. I think that's what it was. Trey Trey Brown had and is dealing with a little injury too. Again, the expectation is that former Husky Sidney Jones joins this group soon. And the four players kept were the four most likely to stick around. But while predicting who made the team might not have been that tricky. What's still unknown is who those players will be starting when the season begins. Also worth noting is that Marquise Blair and Ugo Amadi are the top two players at the nickel spot. So while four cornerbacks might not seem like a lot, the positional flexibility of those two makes the secondary deeper. Yeah, I was going to say, it doesn't seem right to put Marquise Blair and Ugo Amadi and Ryan Neal at exclusively a safety spot. Like They can also play corner if necessary. Yep. And then special teams, obviously, Jason Myers, Michael Dixon, and long snapper Tyler Ott, obviously. And Michael Dixon, man, as long as he's punting those balls deep and helping – us pin our opponents inside their own five yard line at about their one. I love what Michael Dix has been doing it, man. He's a pro bowler punter for a reason, man. I really think Michael Dix is the best punter in the league. And that's basically the whole 53 man roster right there in a nutshell. Yep. I mean, no surprises there. Jason Myers, just stay perfect. Really. Um, uh, Michael Dixon. I mean, I love Michael Dixon, but I don't want him on the field. <laughs> yeah. I mean, not a whole lot. Of, I mean, we don't want – I want to be punting a lot. Um, yeah, that's for sure, man. Obviously, we just got to keep our offense on the field and get our defense enough for us to be able to, you know, shut down opposing offenses. But we can't have our defenses be out there for most of the game getting gassed by the opposing offense. So, yeah, we got to sustain long drives and make sure we don't have Dixon – punting all those times but Michael Dixon when he's out there man when he boots him the punter is kind of a defensive player in a way with how he can pin our opponents deep so so there's a truth to that and that right there guys is it for our 53 man roster reaction and thoughts video let me know let us know your thoughts down in the comments down below and we appreciate you guys coming in and watching this when you get the chance to, once we get this posted, Michael, once again, thank you for doing this. No problem, man. And stay tuned for whenever we collaborate again, to talk more Seahawks stuff. If any certain moves are made or hopefully he joins me in Dallas during red zone reactions, we'll be ready for when those time comes, but until then catch y'all later. If you ain't with it, you ain't infamous. And as always go Seahawks. Go Hawks. All right.